toast notifications are a small, lightweight pop-up that I'm sure you have seen. We've all seen something like this, boom, success. In fact, even if you look in Spotify or many other places, that these things are a best practice for letting users know what is going on and confirming that their actions are having an impact. Stick around if you want to learn more. In this video, we're going to cover this outline, and in the first part of it, we're going to be looking at a little bit more of like the the use case. We're going to actually have a, not a discussion, more of a one-way type of uh, information dump in terms of here's like a good way to go about thinking here a good way to go, to go about thinking how to add these to your app. So we're going to have that discussion. We're going to go over the types of situations and scenarios where you would be using these, and it's all going to lead to a four-step process at the end where you will learn how to outline your features, see the key flows, uh, the key activities in the in the user's flow of actions, uh, craft the wording around what you want to say, and then finally we'll look at the actual plugins. Now, if you want to skip or jump around or anything, you want to go directly, you already know where and when to implement these into your app and you just want to know the know-how, check the chapter notes below in the description and you can jump right to look for the one that says plugins because we'll be looking at two plugins. They're the ones that I think have the most stylish um, small version of their pop-ups. There's a bunch of these out there and they're great thing about them is that they're all free. So with that out of the way, let's get started. Let's dive in and let's look at uh, a few just general guidelines around using these types of notifications. So when you're using these, we kind of want to use them sparingly. Why? Because if you start to having a bunch of these, like if you have three per screen, it can seem a little bit spammy. And I know that everyone is familiar with if you're typing online and you type in cap locks, that has a certain, um, it sounds like screaming only in internet language, right? So there's, there's a set of norms in how to do some things online. And this is an attempt at giving the basic levels of you, we want to help users out, but we don't want to spam them. So next up, let's look at some examples. And then we're going to look at this process that also has a few additional examples. So you can imagine that like when someone is doing something that is quite involved inside of your app, like a multi-step thing, large file uploads that take a while or, you know, the involved long forms, adding something after that they've uh, afterwards to confirm that they've successfully done it is a great idea. Same thing with something that is, you know, this is something that's going into someone's schedule. It's part of their life. If they if they're booking a reservation at you know, whatever it is, maybe it's uh, specific healthcare services in an app or um, some kind of food service or experience somewhere, um, that type of thing. Great, because these are important things that, that they want to be certain that, that you as the system are telling them as a system creator, they've successfully done this. Next, a notification sent to all platform users. It's a big public action, right? So maybe you have a notification section in the app. Let's let's imagine a sports league, right? And you want to announce that the deadline for registering new players is by this date. And so you drop that into the uh, notifications area of your app. And so, you know, the admin area of that, you would want to confirm almost to yourself if you're the one using it or maybe you're building this for a client. Uh, next up, AI generated content that is ready for review. We all know that it can take some time for the AI to do their magic, but when it does it, it's so amazing. And this is just let someone know your stuff's ready. Success. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, next up. Uh, when a password is successfully changed, why there? Well, it's a pretty important thing. It's like how you get into the app and access it. So we could see that being it. Oh, and it looks like I missed one. An item added to a playlist, whether that's a video, a piece of music, just go over to Spotify. If anyone uses that, go add something to playlist. Look at the um, well-crafted uh, and, let's see, non-intrusive toast notification. And how about a new learning pathway unlocked based upon completing a course or a video that allows someone to go to the next level? It's like, you know, a little pat on the back uh, as well as notifying them that they can do that. So we're going to look at a process here. And the best way to look at this process is actually going to be by way of example. So let's take a look at a music streaming app. First, step one, outline all the features. So if we look here, here's our process, outline features. 
find the key flows of activ in the activities, craft the wording, and implement. So here we are. We're outlining the features. There's song playback. There's playlist creation, user profile. I know I'm, uh, you know, flying through this stuff, folks, but it's all recorded here. And, you know, aiming to give you the information that will help you get on to creating the Toast notifications that is going to, uh, give your app that additional bit of polish and bring it to the next level. So let's just uh, isolate one of these playlist creation and management. So here we'll go to play playlist creation management. Here's part two and part three, actually the sequential steps. One, create a playlist. Oh, new playlist created as the, as the wording add song to a playlist song added to the playlist name, right? Because there could be multiple playlists. So the tip for the wording is think about contextually, what is the person doing? And if they have given it, you know, some kind of not personalized, but could be personalized or custom name to something, you know, add that in or give the name of the thing that they've, you know, you've uploaded file to, you know, if they're having multiple folders, a folder that's named X. Um, if they remove a song from playlist, if they rename the playlist, if they delete the playlist, you're just confirming the things that they're, the, the, the general principle is that their actions have had an impact on the app and you're acknowledging this. And so that they can feel, you know, comfortable about the process that they, um, you know, they, they really do know what's going on. So there's a couple more of these. There's travel experiences. You can see app features, sequential steps, uh, a personal finance management, which I can't wait until AI and uh, additional tools make it uh, make the world available to us to track everything better and also in a secure way. And I'm sure we'll we'll be getting there soon. Um, but there are ways to tap into APIs that can connect the financial information of people. So uh, look out for a video in the future on that. Okay, so let's summarize our plan here. Uh, basically, we start an app, we outline the features, we define the user actions, craft some wording. There's a few extra ones in here, like uh, some general guidelines, review and refine what you've done. But without further ado, let's go ahead, let's dive into the two uh, types of no Toast notifications that we're gonna take a look at here. If you go, first off, we're just gonna go to the plugin store and we're gonna get going. So head over to your plugins area where you can just click add plugins and then do a search for toast. Now I've looked through the top five of these and they're all free. Uh, choose what you will in terms of the styling that you want. I will just say that these first two out of the box, um, I like it when someone already has styles that are a little bit more updated. Um, some of them look like they're just from the types of applications that we might've seen six or eight or 10 years ago. Um, and so I'm going to go with this one, Toast Notifications. I'll install that. And then this one, Bubble Toast, and install that. Now let's, you know, anytime you're installing one of these things for the first time, right? We're going to go, we're going to click on the uh, thing itself, the plugin, and we're going to see what's available in it. So this one has just an action of Toast. Okay, cool. So that tells me one thing that right away I can imagine all this configuration for this uh, particular Toast uh notification plugin is going to be on the action panel for the workflows. And then I can see here for the second one, it has an element, a notifier and notify a notifier. The next thing I'm doing as I'm looking at these things is I'm just noting down the name of these because when I go to the workflow area, that's how you can find them. Um, just a tip for anyone who didn't, uh, didn't know that. So let's go ahead and we, we have this one with element notifier. And so let's go, let's go to our page. And just, just to share the setup briefly, there's two buttons and our workflows are empty. So we're gonna add stuff to it. Right after we go here, we're gonna say note, notifier. So I'm gonna grab that, I'm gonna drop it in. I'm gonna make it a one by one pixel. So it just, it's on the page. That means the plugin code gets the load um, on the page. So then it's usable by us. And uh, I'm then, now let's go, let's go, let's say that this one will be type one. It's the, it's the notifier one. If we note it on the uh, elements and actions, we're going to look for notifier. So notify a, not a notifier. And the message I'm going to say is, so we can see here a couple different type. Uh, let's go with this loading one. Um, also seeing your request. We're just going to, we're going to play around here and we're going to see what we get. Okay. So here processing your request, it's coming in the top left. 
I kind of really want that to be in the top middle. So notice that I don't see any um, configuration steps there. And like I mentioned, uh, you know, noting between the other two, the one that did not have an element that we put here. So it's just up to plugin developers for where they put stuff. But the bottom line is that there's going to be settings, you know, anytime you're digging into one of these plugins and, you know, wondering what's the what's the best way to go about it. So I can see this top center here. I can control all the different things about it. So I'm looking at the, uh, let's see, Let's watch this one actually load again now. Okay, so we see that in the center after making that update. And I'll just note here for this particular one, I'm gonna tie the two of them together for you here. So under this type, blank, success, and error, these all have different um, styling options available to, to you. So here is your, your border. But I, but I, the reason why I'm showing off this plugin in this video is because I think they, it, it looks pretty darn good. Like if you loaded up this during a process request, you don't have to worry anything about, you know, loading bars or other things. I mean, if you timed it out right, because basically all you're doing here is you are then setting the duration of what will show up here. Uh, but, but out of the box with these, let's just go with the success one now. Out of the box, let's go and take a look at the style of this. So boom. Now that probably looks a lot like something you've seen before. And you know, if you're building an app in no code, and if you're newer to the world of software development, then one of the things you want to be um, giving attention to is having your app have the look and feel of not to copy, but it's just so that there is convention. Menus are usually at the top of a page, right? It's just convention so that people feel comfortable in a system that they've arrived to, you know, sometimes for the first time. Okay, so that is one option here. Let's go, let's just look at the final one here. We'll look at an error message on this one and then we'll move on and go to our next one. Okay, boom. Uh, and okay, so it looks like because I have processing requests in there, you can uh, type in not just the error, but just uh, failed to upload the, you know, insert dynamic uh, 950 megabyte uh, video. Please try again. And that is, if we tie it back to our earlier discussion, that is this craft wording so that it's helpful. So that it's contextual to what it is that the, that the person is doing. Okay, so I'm gonna move on. Uh, we'll take a look at this one after, but with the updated text, now I'm gonna add workflow and I'm gonna do a search for toast. So on this next one here, I'm also gonna go top center. I just think it looks a little better there. And I'm gonna say sample title. And here is the message. Okay, type. So we have a couple of these right out of the box. Let's go with success to start out with. And then there are a few additional uh, things we can do here for um, different stylization, but let's just go with what we got here. First, we'll test out the, the last part of the other one, just didn't want to keep going back and forth, but we can see, you know, that's a helpful message if something doesn't happen. And after, you know, with such a large file, sometimes that stuff happens. Here's the title, here's the message. Let's just take a look at it if we leave the let's actually leave the uh, the title off. And so we can see here that's even more simplistic, right? And it's got this X so that somebody could close it out and you know they can have the little bit of control in their hands, whereas this one, this is not really anything you can do to make it go away. Um, so in, in all this, I kind of like this one as my favorite because it's, you know, it's like, okay, thank you. I'm done with it, uh, moving on with my life. And, and that's it. So to wrap up uh, what we saw here is basically just a kind of a use case for how um, you'll want to work these into your app and what are some good ideas for appropriate places. And if anyone is interested in PDFs, you would like to dive deeper into this travel experience one, the music streaming one, or this personal finance manager one, where we're just breaking down the features of these apps, looking at the sequential steps and the notification uh, wording, which is uh, these two items, the key flow activities, call them steps, whatever, craft the wording, and then implement, which we saw at the end of this video. So these will be available for download in the description, along with this process outline. Uh, if you just like to, you know, have something to look at to uh, start to brainstorm for, for your app. So there you have it. 
If you like this video, you'd probably also really like the video on the channel about animations. That one is also another great UX experience uh, video where you can learn how to animate your uh, more than just text, just things flying in or, um, you know, coming up or coming together as people scroll down the page. Um, there's a bunch of stuff over in that one. So I think you'll really enjoy. Thanks for watching.